Um, but uh, 1 Samuel chapter 30. Now, I want you to go over to verse 7 here. Actually, back up just a, a slight bit here. Help if I get in the right chapter. All right. All right. Verse 6. It says, And David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him. How is that an encouragement? Yeah. To set the context, David's wives, all the people in Ziklag were taken captive in Judah, and, and, and the people were so distressed and so grieved, say grieved, grieved. that they wanted to stone the leader. See, it, 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 what's happening in our nation today, people are so grieved and overwhelmed, they just want to stone the leader. That's right. Well, you know, stoning the leader won't solve your problem. Amen. Come on. David was grieved because they spoke of stoning him, because the soul of the people was grieved, every man for his sons and daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord. See, we have a first responsibility of strengthening ourselves when things are very difficult, when the pressure's on. Because, see, you can't get any more pressure than, than everything and everyone being taken captive. Would you say that that probably translated to some financial distress? Mm -hmm. Because these people were taken captive by the Amalekites, which, by the way, should have already been destroyed, but Saul didn't do the job. See, let me just pause for a second. Our obedience to every instruction of God is key to keeping generations free from a bondage to come. If Saul had obeyed fully the voice of the Lord God through Samuel the prophet, David wouldn't have been dealing with the Amalekites. See, a generation rose up that hated the Jews for what they had done in destroying the land, but they rose up and took revenge. All because Saul said, well, you know, we, we obeyed in part, but it was the people. He blame shifted. And David, verse 7, said to Abathar the priest, Ahimelech's son, please bring me the ephod. And Abathar brought the ephod to David. And David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue the troop? Shall I overtake? And he answered and said, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them, and without fail you will recover all. See, the, the first key to recovering all is you better be asking God how to approach it, not trying to reason away and rationalize and figure out how to solve your problem. Because, the, 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 just, just let's be real. When we lean on the arm of the flesh, then we are destined to make bad choices once again. But we, when we make a change and we press into the altars of God up here, and we press in and we look to God, shall I overtake or shall I not overtake? Shall I go? Shall I stay? <coughs> And you get the word of the Lord and you obey that word. Look what happens. And David went, he and 600 men who were with him, and came to the brook Bishor, where they stayed, who were left behind. But David pursued with 400 men. 200 men stayed behind. Verse 11, it says, And they found an Egyptian in the field and brought him to David, and they gave him bread to eat and water to drink, and gave him a piece of uh, a cake of figs and a cluster, two clusters of raisins. And when he had eaten, his strength came back to him, for he had eaten no bread nor drank any water for three days and three nights. And David said, To whom do you long, belong, and where are you from? And he said, I am a young man from Egypt. The servant of an Ahimelech, or Amalekite, I'm sorry. And my master left me behind because three days ago I fell sick. And when 
We made an invasion of the southern area of the Cherethites and the territory that belongs to Judah and the southern area of Caleb. And we burned Ziklag with fire. And David said to him, Can you take me down to the troop? And he said, Swear to me by God that you will neither kill me nor deliver me into the hands of my master, and I'll take you down to the troop. And when they had brought him down, there they were spread out all over the land, eating and drinking and dancing because of all the great spoil that they had taken from the Phil land of the Philistines and the land of Judah. See, the enemy gets so confident once he's been successful in attacking you that, that he begins to party. Here they were. Hey, live it up, eat and drink, be merry. And David attacked them. See, your time of attack is now. Amen. While the enemy thinks they won. That's right. Your time of attack is now. And David attacked them from twilight until the evening of the next day, and not a man escaped except 400 young men who rode on camels uh, and fled. And David recovered how much? All. All that the Amalekites carried away, and David rescued his two wives, wives, and there was nothing that was theirs that was lacking, either small or great, son or daughter, spoil or anything that they had taken from David, for David recovered all. Well, l let me give you a clue here. He didn't just go back to where he was, financially. Because the Amalekites had plundered a lot of people. He not only got back what they lost, he recovered more. See, it, but it is our responsibility to go to the battle and to recover the spoils, like we talked about last week, stripping the spoils off the dead. Proverbs 13, 22, the wealth of the sinner is stored up for the righteous. But we have to not only express faith, we got to put our hand to it and get moving. Amen. Amen. That's right. Because we're not working and, and, and operating in our effort. We're operating in obedience to God. And God says, you've got the victory. Now go take hold of it. Go lay possession to it. See, we're, we're going to break the back of a poverty mindset in this church. We're going to break the back of lack because we are not just going to go back to where we were. So you don't want to go back where you were spiritually. You don't want to go back where you were financially because if you're going to be a blessing to the families of the earth, you've got to go beyond. Proverbs 10, 22, the blessing of the Lord makes rich and he adds no sorrow with it. So there is no shame. It is not humility to be poor and can't pay your way out of attention. Come on. That's right. Amen. No, God wants you to be the head and not the tail above, not beneath, blessed and not cursed. And so we participate in the covenant of tithing and an offering that we may be a blessing to the families of the earth. It's not a legalistic thing, guys. It's a covenant thing. Amen. On this side of the cross, it all belongs to Him anyway. Jesus paid it all, but guess what? We're participants and we have responsibility in the house to tithe, to offer. At the end of service, we're going to receive a love offering for, 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 for Dr. Hutton and, and bless him. You know, and, and we don't skim off the top. I don't know if you've ever experienced that. I've heard it done. I, you know, I, I've had them receive love offerings and never give me any of it. So... <laughs> um, <laughs> No, we as a church, we bless and we add. So I want you to do your best and we're going to do our best when we receive that love offering. But right now we tithe because this is where the local church keeps marching in the mission and the vision. And, and, and let me just make a, a very public, are we online now? Yes, sir. I'm going to make a very public announcement because a rumor got started that we were closing. We were closing and starting a coffee shop. <laughs> Let me make a very clear announcement. We are not closing, but we are probably starting a coffee shop. <laughs> Two different stories. Okay? And if we get approval from the landlord, we will have probably the first week of shopping for Christmas, the Global Cafe. Amen. Come on. <laughs> And it's going to be another avenue to draw attention to what God's doing here. We're, we're working on the possibility that, that, uh, of uh, 
making Christmas trees available to the community to, to, to purchase. And you know what? We're going to start stretching the, the, the tent curtains out, lengthening the cords, strengthening the stakes, and we are going to make a difference in this community. And we are not closing, we are expanding. Hallelujah. Come on. Now that's the end of the rumor. So I want you to spread that. All right? Thank you. If you're giving a check, make it out to Overcomers Community Church. You can also give uh, via text, um, and I believe that number is 77977, and it'll ask you for your information. It takes less than 30 seconds to fill that out. You can also give online by going to our website, occonlinechurch.com. You can give cash, and if you want to trade a few camels, we'll, we'll work that out too. Um, <laughs> but anyway, um, uh, we are grateful for... Overcomers Community Church. We are grateful for. Look, hey, do you appreciate a nice seat? Yes, Come on. Amen. We got air conditioning. <laughs> Somebody tried to shut our power off last week, Doc. Oh, really? Shut down one section of our, our of our plaza space here. Wow. So we fixed them. We padlocked it. <laughs> <laughs> they thought they were going to inconvenience us and they didn't stop us. Come on. Hallelujah. Listen. But if we didn't have the electricity, would you still be here to worship Jesus, Jesus and receive the word? Yes. See, man, when we go to foreign lands, when I've gone to foreign lands, I go to Central America or whatever and been to Haiti. And I know, Doc, you've been places. And uh, Listen, there are folks that don't even have a, a roof over their head to meet. And they'll travel miles and miles. They'll walk hours to receive from the word. There, there's a man we've connected with in, in uh, Pakistan. Man, he, he'll travel 10 hours to go do a crusade and 40,000 people show up in the middle of a field. Come on. But we can't drive up the street to go show up at a plaza. <laughs> we have become spoiled. But you know what? There's a change blowing. Amen. And there is a hunger stirring. And so as we give today, we give in faith. We give in honor. We give obediently. Amen? And so I want you to stand to your feet once you have your offering ready, your tithe ready. And we're going to speak and declare over it. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I've told, it's, there's some new first timers here, so listen. Start where you are. If you've got to take a pen, like Brother Copeland took a pencil out to partner with bro Brother Roberts, if you've got to take a pen and drop it in the envelope, you might not reach the plane of the door before somebody gave you a seed to sow. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's true. He didn't have, he broke the pencil in half, wrote it out, and put the eraser part in the envelope. By the time he got to the door, a woman gave him his partner money. He went and caught the usher, opened the envelope. And that was the beginning of his partnership with Dr. Earl Roberts. See, we start where we are, but we've got to start somewhere. Amen. Amen? So let's hold up our gift in the air. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you. We just worship you in our giving. Lord God, obediently with a heart of love and obedience. And Father, we are grateful and thankful, Father, for seed to sow, bread for food. Father, that it's increased, multiplied, and blessed in the name of Jesus. And Father, we're not going back to where we were. We're going beyond. For you are good, and your mercy endures forever, and we thank you for the opportunity to give today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may be seated. God bless you as you give. Hallelujah.